So as I told you, in amino acid, uh, we have uh, uh, alpha carbon. Okay. This alpha carbon is connected with the four groups. Right. One is the amino group. Let me write this as NH2. The other one is carboxylic acid group. If amino group and carboxylic acid group directly connected to a carbon, we call that amino acid as alpha amino acid. This carbon is called alpha carbon. It's alpha carbon. Alpha carbon has one amino group, one acid group, and one hydrogen. All amino acids, all alpha amino acids has these three. Additionally, we have a group called R. Okay, we call this as side chain. This group is called side chain. Right? It may be methyl, it may be ethyl, it may be phenyl ring, benzyl ring, right? We have, uh, we have discussed, right? The structures of many uh, the 20 different amino acids okay and i have given the difference in r from one amino acid to another amino acid okay so first keep this in mind r represent r uh, we call this r as a side chain okay then the next point is <coughs> poly uh, what are called uh, peptides when amino acids Combine. Let me write shortly as AAS. Amino acids, plural. Amino acids, when amino acids combine or condense, we call that reaction as a condensation, right? Condensation reaction. Through condensation reaction, these amino acid molecules, okay, uh, join together by means of what is called peptide linkage. And the compound obtained is called a peptide you'll get a compound called peptide. This peptide consists of one or more peptide linkages. Okay. Suppose if two amino acid molecules, last class we'll discuss all these things. If two uh, amino acid molecules combine, you'll get what is called a dipeptide. So dipeptide means it consists of two amino acid units and there is one linkage. It consists of one, one, Peptide linkage. What is peptide linkage? C O C double bond O bond NH. It consists of one peptide linkage. If three amino acid molecules combine, you'll get what is called tripeptide. Students, turn on your camera. Hello, students. Turn on your camera. A tripeptide consists of three amino acid units and it contains two peptide linkage. Okay, these things we discussed in the last lecture itself. Now, what is meant by a polypeptide? When we can call a peptide as a polypeptide? A polypeptide polypeptide. What is meant by a polypeptide? A polypeptide contains more than this is uh, as per definition more than 10 amino acid units. A polypeptide okay contains more than 10 amino acid units joined together through uh, peptide linkages. Okay, that's the point. Now, now what is meant by a protein? Protein. Protein, I have told you, protein is actually a polymer, polymer of amino acid molecules. Students, keep this in mind. Whatever proteins that is available Okay, that uh, that uh, uh, we are using all proteins contain different amino acid molecules. If all amino acid molecules are same, suppose only glycine is formed, combine many many glycine combine and form the protein, we call that polymer as homopolymer. But in nature, it was found that in all proteins, different twenty different amino acid 
okay, combined in a different different manner and forms what is called the protein. So proteins are basically heteropolymers. Proteins are not homopolymers; they are hetero. They are heteropolymers where where the polymer is made up of amino acids as monomeric unit. Amino acid as monomeric unit. As monomeric unit. Okay. It consists of amino acids as monomers. Okay. Then. Uh, so polymers are, uh, uh, proteins are heteropolymers. That's a very important point. Next one. In proteins, usually amino acids are present from 50 to 2000 uh, units. Okay. So proteins contain, proteins contain um, 50 to 2000 amino acid molecules. Very good. It may contain 50, it may contain 100, it may contain, okay. Usually it contains 50 to 2000 amino acid molecules. Okay. But uh, in the NCRT book, it is given above 100. Okay. But uh, uh, there are examples where we have 50 amino acids also, 51. Okay. So keep this in mind, very, very important. Then we classify proteins. Right? We classify proteins into two. So proteins are nothing but heteropolymers. They are biopolymers. Okay, you can also call this as a biopolymer. Proteins are biopolymers. Very specifically heteropolymers. It consists of okay, many amino acid molecules joined together through peptide linkage. Okay. Now each and every protein. I'd like to include that point here. Each and every protein has a specific function. The function, the specific function of protein is actually determined by its three dimensional structure. So, three dimensional, I'll just write 3D. 3D means three dimensional. Three dimensional structure, structure of protein, protein. Okay, three dimensional structure of protein, right, determines its specific function. Determine its, its function or specific function. Right. Every protein in the body has a characteristic role. Okay, that is determined by its three dimensional structure. So, this three dimensional structure of protein is very very important okay we are going to learn what is the structure of protein as we go now classification of proteins how we can classify proteins classification of proteins proteins can be classified right in different ways but uh, we are going to see um, based on shape molecular shape of protein how can we classify Right. So classification of protein uh, based on based on uh, molecular shape. Molecular shape. Based on molecular shape, we classify proteins into two. Right? Based on molecular shape, we classify proteins into two. What are they? Number one, fibrous protein. Fibrous proteins number two globular proteins globular proteins fibrous proteins and globular proteins what is meant by that what is meant by uh, fibrous protein and what is meant by globular protein fibrous means uh, if uh, uh, proteins let me write in this page this will be a fibrous protein. Fibrous protein. What is meant by that? Students observe this carefully. This point I have given already. 
gelatinous protein may contain single polypeptide chain single polypeptide chain or protein may contain more than one polypeptide chain more than one polypeptide chain okay we call these polypeptide chains as subunits students observe carefully the polypeptide chains are called as subunits if a protein contain only one polypeptide chain we call this as uh, there is one subunit okay um, we call that uh, protein as a monomer monomeric protein if it contain two polypeptide chain right dimer if it contain three polypeptide chain trimer if it contain four polypeptide chain it's called tetramer okay so depending upon number of polypeptide chain present okay you call we can call the protein as uh, monomer dimer trimer etc okay now if the polypeptide chains exist in linear fashion right if the polypeptides exist as linear chains this is one polypeptide chain this is another polypeptide chain this is another polypeptide chain like that okay if many many polypeptide chains exist in linear manner and between them they are attracted by hydrogen bonds these uh, ch polypeptide chains okay which are existing in linear fashion right and uh, uh, they are closely packed with the hydrogen bonds with lot of hydrogen bonds these hydrogen bonds makes these polypeptide chains okay exist closer and very stable and this poly, this protein see it's a single protein containing many polypeptide chain right if the polypeptide chains of a protein exist in linear manner and if you have hydrogen bonds between these chains okay we get a protein called fibrous protein it looks like a fiber it's it's look like a fiber that's why it is called a fibrous protein right fibrous proteins so keep this in mind the fibrous protein means in fibrous protein polypeptide chains exist in a linear manner and uh, they exist as sideways one one chain and another chain another chain and another chain they exist in sideways and uh, between them there are hydrogen bonds these hydrogen bonds keep them closer and make them stable okay and uh, this entire uh, chains okay looks like a fiber it it, it it exists like a fiber that's why it's called fibrous protein and remember fibrous proteins are, are insoluble in water fibrous proteins are insoluble in water okay so uh, these proteins cannot act as a hormone you know even hormone should travel right hormone should travel in blood right or uh, in, uh, in 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 water it has to travel right so uh, to travel in water it has to miscible in water okay since fibrous proteins are immiscible in water or insoluble in water okay fibrous protein usually fibrous proteins cannot be cannot be harmless okay so keep this in mind and fibrous proteins usually uh, for forms what is called the structure structural proteins right say uh, keratin and uh, muscle proteins etc okay they are all called fibrous proteins right so just think what is keratin okay it is called fibrous protein then what is mean by globular protein in protein globular protein what is mean by globular protein in some protein the polypeptide chains they uh, they they form coil like arrangement many chains they form coil like arrangement and they won't around okay they won't around and exist like a sphere 
okay it forms it exists like a spherical shape spherical if polypeptide chains of a protein okay uh, they uh, wound around or they exist like a spherical shape we call those proteins as globular proteins okay and globular proteins are soluble in water they are soluble in water since they are soluble in water okay globular proteins right can act as a hormones so in general hormones hormones are globular proteins globular proteins say for example insulin you know well insulin is a hormone right which is a globular protein this readily soluble in water okay and uh, uh, and uh, uh, controls the glucose level in blood okay it's a globular protein so we classify proteins into two fibrous and globular based on the shape if they exist as linear chains and the linear chains are existing in sideways and if the chains are connected by hydrogen bond <laughs> then the protein will, will look like a fiber we call that protein as uh, fibrous protein if the protein chains are the polypeptide chains okay exist like in, in a spherical shape okay they uh, join together and exist as a spherical shape we call those proteins as globular proteins globular proteins are soluble in water okay yeah keep this in mind this is very very important now we are going to see the structure of protein why do we need to learn about the structure of protein the reason is proteins um, have each and every protein has a, a specific function the function of a protein right is decided by the three dimensional structure if there is any change in the three dimensional structure then the protein will lose its function okay so that's very very important therefore it is um, it is it is more important to learn about the structure of proteins so let me tell you that so uh, any doubt up to this so there's any doubt okay right. no. now we will see the structure of protein or protein structure protein structure this is actually a very big uh, topic uh, but i am going to uh, discuss in a short uh, in a short manner okay but it is a the wide topic actually right <clears throat> protein structure can be described in four levels protein structure protein structure can be described okay in in four levels four levels what are they number one primary structure primary structure of protein right primary structure of protein number two secondary structure of protein secondary structure of protein number 3 tertiary tertiary structure of protein number 4 quaternary structure of protein quaternary structure of protein so in protein structure we have four levels right in each level we are going to learn right uh, some of the essential aspects okay so first we'll just start with the primary structure what is meant by primary structure of protein okay what is the meaning of the primary structure primary structure of of protein okay primary structure of protein so let's observe this carefully before going to see the primary structure of protein 
let us take uh, two amino acids. Say I will take uh, uh, glycine and alanine. Okay. Uh, this is glycine. CH2. COOH. NH2. This is glycine. Glycine. And I will take uh, uh, another amino acid. NH2. CH. CH3. COH. This amino acid is called alanine. Alanine. Okay. I'll represent this simply as G, glycine G. One letter code, alanine A. Okay, one letter code. Students, observe carefully. Suppose if I form a dipeptide. Dipeptide means two amino acids combine and form di. Okay, and form a peptide. How many different uh, dipeptides will get. I am taking two amino acids, I am going to form dipeptide. Now, how many different amino acids will get? Suppose you take a, a beaker and put the two amino acids okay, and then carry a condensation reaction. Right? How many amino acids will get? See, when amino acid reacts, acid group, OH group of one amino acid takes one hydrogen from NH2 group and uh, uh, it will eliminate a water molecule, you will get a new linkage between CO and NH. It is called peptide linkage. So when amino acid reacts, acid group of one amino acid reacts with the amino group of another amino acid and uh, it will eliminate a water molecule, you will get a peptide bond, a peptide linkage. Now the question is, in how many ways it can react? Okay, in in the uh, in the vessel, if you do the reaction, right, without uh, making any control, if you do the reaction, glycine may react with another glycine. You will get this dipeptide. Alanine may react with another alanine. You will get a dipeptide of this type. Yeah. Glycine may react with alanine, or alanine may react with the glycine like this. Okay, students observe this carefully. These two are definitely different. It's very, very simple. Now, are these two different or same? G, A, A, G. Are these two same or different? Same dipeptide or different dipeptide? You need not worry about this. It's very clear. Because in this dipeptide, the two amino acids are glycine. In this dipeptide, the two amino acids are alanine. Now the question is this. <coughs> yeah. It's very simple, students. Observe this carefully. By convention, by convention, okay, in any polypeptide or any peptide, okay, suppose if a peptide is given, it may be uh, a tripeptide, tetrapeptide, whatever it is. Always we write amino group okay or n terminal of amino acid in the left hand side and c terminal of the amino acid in the right hand side what is the meaning if i write c g a like this it means in glycine amino group is free it is not involved in reaction in alanine acid group is free it is not involved in the reaction Okay, what's the meaning? See, just I'll write. See, in the case of glycine, NH2, CH2, COOH plus alanine, NH2, CH, CH3, COOH. Right? Suppose if the acid group of glycine and the amino group of alanine, if they react, you will get a compound called NH2, CH2. And here you get a peptide linkage CO, NH, right? It is connected to CH, CH3, COOH. Students observe very, observe carefully. Now see, this is the glycine part and this is the alanine part. In glycine part, amino group of glycine is free. It is not involved in the reaction. Similarly, the acid group of alanine is free. 
So we call this as N-terminal amino acid. Glycine is the N-terminal amino acid and alanine is the C-terminal amino acid. Okay, so uh, suppose if I write like this, say glycine, alanine, tryptophan, like this, what does it indicate? It indicates that in glycine, amino group is free, in tryptophan, acid group is free. By convention, we always write N terminal group, N terminal amino acid in left hand side and C terminal amino acid in the right hand side. This is convention. So, now see these two. In GA, amino group of glycine is free. That is N terminal. And carboxylic acid group of alanine is free. Okay? What about in AG? In AG, amino group of alanine is free. Carboxylic acid group of glycine is free. So these two are not same. See, Are the two same? No, they are not same. So this letter codes are very very important. They are not they 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 are not same actually. Okay, students, is it clear? So so while writing any amino acid, we always write okay N terminal amino acid in the left hand side and C terminal amino acid in the right hand side. Okay, so in a polypeptide chain, just I'll write in there this page. What is meant by uh, primary structure? Students observe carefully. Suppose I have an N terminal amino acid here and I have a chain, chain of amino acid molecules, many many amino acid molecules. Then I have a C terminal amino acid here. This is N terminal, C terminal. In between, okay, we have lot of amino acid molecules. Now, if you identify Okay, from from N terminal onwards, or from C terminal onwards, what are the From N terminal uh, terminal amino acid onwards, what are all the amino acids present? Okay, what is the first amino acid? What is the second amino acid? What is the third amino acid? What is the fourth amino acid? If you if you identify the amino acid present right from N terminal to C terminal completely, okay, then you will get what is called the primary structure. Primary structure tells you about, right, how amino acid molecules are arranged in the polypeptide chain. Okay, so let me write here, primary structure, primary structure is, what is primary structure? Primary structure is, is the amino acid sequence, is the amino acid amino acid sequence sequence in polypeptide chain or in protein chain polypeptide chain what is amino acid sequence sequence means it is the order in, in to what order or in what order the amino acids are arranged okay is the for, is the n terminal amino acid is glycine or not next is it alanine or not is this tryptophan or not? Okay, then uh, cysteine or not? Like that. Whatever amino acids, right, from N terminal to C terminal, right, which amino acid is, is present? Okay, from N terminal onwards. Okay, if you analyze or if you identify the amino acid order, right, so primary structure tells you about order in which the order of arrangement. I can write like this also. Order of arrangement of amino acids, amino acids in polypeptide chain. Sequence or you can also say order of arrangement. In what order the amino acid molecules are arranged. Okay. Say for example, in the case of insulin, students observe carefully. Insulin, insulin um, is a hormone. I have told you. Insulin is a hormone which consists of 51 amino acid units. 51 amino acid units. Okay. And actually insulin consists of two chains. It consists of two chains. Two polypeptide chains. Okay. One chain contains um, 
21 amino acid the other chain contain 30 amino acid and they are linked through disulfide linkages sulfur sulfur disulfide linkages they are linked through disulfide linkages okay students in this we know in, in this polypeptide chain okay what are all the amino acids that is present in what order the, the uh, amino acids are arranged similarly in the second chain also we know what order the arrangements the amino acids are arranged okay we know the complete order okay whether it is a glycine or alanine right we know that we have identified that if you identify the amino acids okay present in a uh, present in a polypeptide chain in orderly manner from N terminal to C terminal, okay, what we get is the primary structure. So, primary structure tells you about the order of arrangement of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. Simple. Okay, students keep this in mind. If there is any change in the order, see as I told you before, as I told you before, suppose I will take a uh, uh, I will take it's a simple polypeptide, say uh, methionine, uh, <coughs> isoleucine, and uh, thymine, some, some, uh, MIT. If MIT, see MIT means this is a polypeptide where N terminal is methionine, then isoleucine, then C terminal is threonine. Students, if I make any change in this TIM, are the two polypeptides same? Or IMT? Are these polypeptides same? They are made up of same uh, amino acid molecules, but the order of arrangement is different. See? If there is any change in the order, then that polypeptide, that peptide become a different peptide. So this is a tri one different one tripeptide. This is a different tripeptide. This is another different tripeptide. So, the sequence in which the amino acid molecule present that decides, that decides the function. If there is any change in the sequence, then the uh, function will change. Okay. So, primary structure of protein tells you about the uh, sequence in which the amino acid molecules are arranged. Right. Then second one. Number two, secondary structure of protein. Secondary structure. Is this clear, student? Any doubt? Students, uh, turn on your camera. All of you. Hello, students. Hello. Yes, sir. Secondary structure of uh, protein. See, in the primary structure, okay, uh, in the polypeptide chain, we found that uh, what are all the amino acids present and in what order they present. Okay, what is the sequence? What is the sequence of the uh, amino acids present in the polypeptide? That we know. And I and keep this in mind if there is any change in the arrangement, then uh, that polypeptide is a different polypeptide. The functions are different. Okay, so suppose if we take insulin, in insulin, one particular arrangement of amino acid should be there. If there is a change in the amino acid uh, arrangement, then uh, insulin will show, insulin will never act as a, uh, as a hormone. Okay, then the function will change. Okay, now secondary structure. What is secondary structure? Secondary structure refers to uh, the local conformation. Right? See, uh, here there are a lot of bonds, right? See, we have CO bond, we have NH bond, we have alpha carbon, right? So many things are there. These bonds, single bonds, can undergo free rotation. Students observe carefully. Single bonds can undergo free rotation. Due to free rotation, the molecule will stay in a particular orientation, particular conformation. Okay, whether this CO and NH should be opposite to each other or it present with the 90 degree angle or 180 degree angle, all these things are decided by the stability. 
okay it's called conformation so secondary structure tells about the local conformation local conformation of segments of segments of uh, of primary structure the primary structure it, it, it tells you about this local conformation how um, uh, the uh, the single the polypeptide chain actually exists or i can say in the other way secondary structure refers to okay folding of the primary structure of protein right folding folding of the primary or polypeptide chain folding of polypeptide chain right how the polypeptide chain folds right it folds in two ways usually uh, if you take uh, uh, different proteins okay the protein the polypeptide chain folds in two ways actually what are they number one folding of polypeptide chain okay what are the uh, two ways in which the polypeptide chains usually folds it is called secondary structure number one alpha helix structure alpha helix structure number two beta sheets beta pleated sheets beta pleated sheets alpha helix and beta pleated sheets secondary structure see protein secondary structure exists in two ways secondary structure means very simple we have a linear polypeptide chain now i am going to fold it okay you can fold or you can, the protein fold in two ways usually in two ways one is alpha helical structure the other one is beta plated sheet what is alpha helical structure listen we know very well in protein all amino acid molecules are alpha amino acids <coughs> sorry in protein all amino acid molecules are alpha amino acids and we also know that all all alpha amino acids are l amino acids okay see amino acids present in right protein are all are all alpha amino acids that we know amino acids present in protein are all alpha amino acids then we also know that alpha amino acids these alpha amino acids right the amino acids present in protein these alpha amino acids okay exist in nature as l amino acids i have told you they exist as l amino acids since all are l amino acids in protein these l amino acid will form a coil that coil is called alpha helix it, it will take a coil form It's called alpha helix. This is alpha helix. It's a right-handed helix. Why right-handed helix? That's important. All right here. So uh, the protein, the protein chain, or the polypeptide chain, protein coils, coils, and form what is called the helix. Alpha helix. Alpha helix is a right-handed helix. That is very good. alpha helix is a right handed helix why why alpha helix is a right handed helix the reason is all amino acids present in uh, protein are l amino acids since all are l okay they combine and exist as a right handed helix alpha helix is a right handed helix keep this in mind it never exists as left hand okay if i say helix helix may be right handed or left handed okay but in amino in proteins all alpha helix are right handed helix the reason is amino acids present all are l amino acids that's the reason okay i'll come to beta sheets later first we'll finish up this alpha helix now i'll just show you how the alpha helix structure will look like so students keep this in mind protein contain polypeptide chain 
in polypeptide chain how different amino acids are arranged the arrangement is nothing but if you, if you identify the arrangement that is nothing but primary structure after identifying the arrangement of amino acids in protein chain now we are going to the next level of structure but sir these amino acids, these protein proteins actually uh, call actually uh, fold right it can fold in two ways one is alpha helical structure the other one is beta helical chain in alpha helical structure the protein chain or the polypeptide chain okay uh, it will uh, it will form a coil the coil will exist as a helix and the helix is always a right handed helix okay what is meant by right handed helix okay show you the alpha helix right this is how the right handed helix will look like Just show uh, the simplest picture. This is a protein structure. This is front front side, and this is the back side of the protein. Okay, just imagine that. Okay, students, observe carefully. If, if you if you go from here, this is actually uh, this is end terminal and this is C terminal. You should be able to draw this. This end is end terminal. That end is C terminal. Okay, if you see from the bottom, if you go, right, it will look like uh, your right hand. See, the coil will look like your right hand. That's why it is called the right hand helix. Okay, and uh, uh, students observe this carefully. It is something look like a ribbon. Suppose I'll take a ribbon, right? Uh, I'll make it into coil. I'll make it into coil, and if I lift it. The, will the coil remains as such? Will the turns remain as such in the, in the case of a normal ribbon? The turns will uh, will go away, right? It will become straight again because there is no force of attraction. Whereas in alpha helical structure, these turns, these are called turns. These turns remain stable. Why they remain stable? Because because there is a hydrogen bonding. See. Suppose I will take one amino acid here, the NH group. I will take NH group of one amino acid in this term. In the next term, CO group of another amino acid. See, in the next term, CO group of an amino acid. Between them, there is an hydrogen bonding. There is an hydrogen bonding. There is an hydrogen bonding between CO group of uh, between NH group of one amino acid and the CO group of another amino acid in the next turn. This hydrogen bonding stabilizes this turn, stabilizes the coil structure. So this alpha helical structure, I'll write, I'll, I'll write the points here. Alpha helical structure is right-handed structure first of all. It is a right-handed helix. First point. Second point, okay, this coil structure is stabilized by in normal ribbon, if you make it into coil and if you lift it, the, the turns will go away immediately because there is no stabilizing factors. Whereas here, this one turn and the other turn, right, they remain as such. Why? Because between these turns, there are hydrogen bonding, right? So this coil structure is stabilized by, stabilized by hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding uh, within the uh, within polypeptide chain okay this hydrogen bonding stabilizes the alpha helical structure or the secondary structure right and students observe this carefully i'll take a point in, in one turn i'll take a similar point in the other turn in the second next immediate turn okay it need not be same amino acid. It is different amino acid. Just uh, geometrically, I am showing. Okay, you take a point here, and exactly at the same location, you take another point here. Listen and measure the distance. And this distance is what we call as a pitch. Pitch. Pitch of um, 
of an ultra structure is 5.4 angstrom units. 5.4 angstrom units. And in each turn, okay, this is a turn, this is another turn, this is another turn. In each turn, there are uh, amino acid molecules present, right? Many amino acid molecules are present. How many amino acid molecules are present in one turn? Okay. Number of amino acid molecules in one turn, right? There are 3.4 amino acid molecules, amino acid residues. I'll use the word residues. Amino acid residues present present per turn. In one turn, we have 3.4 amino acid molecules. Not exactly 3, not exactly 4. In between, 3.4. 3.4 amino acid residues present per turn. Okay, this is the alpha helical structure. Keep this in mind. Very, very important. Okay, why alpha helical structure is right handed helix? Why alpha helix is right handed? Students? <coughs> because all amino acids are L amines. Simple. In protein, okay, the amino acids present all are L amino acids. That is why they form right-handed helix. Okay, this is the first point we should keep in mind. Then, how this coil structure is stable? Why the coil structure is stable? It is because of the hydrogen bonds. Okay, there are a lot of hydrogen bonds present between one turn and another turn. So, these hydrogen bonds stabilizes these turns. Therefore, the coil structure remains stable. And third point. Okay, pitch. What is pitch? Pitch is the distance between the adjacent term. Right? This distance between the adjacent term is called pitch. And uh, in proteins, the pitch uh, the distance is 5.4 angstrom units. And how many amino acids present in one term? Okay, it is 3.4 amino acid residues present per term. Right? Just for information's sake, I give you this. Right? Keep this in mind. Then in secondary structure, this polypeptide chain may also present in the other way. See, suppose if hydrogen bond can be formed, okay, within within a single polypeptide chain, then the polypeptide usually exists as helical structure. Students, observe my words carefully. If hydrogen bonds can be formed, okay, within a single poly, it's a single polypeptide chain. It's a single polypeptide chain. Within that, there are hydrogen bonds are formed. Then, yes, you will get alpha helical structure. But in some protein, in some protein, a hydrogen bond may not be formed within, within a single polypeptide chain. It cannot stabilize the coil structure. In those cases, what will happen, the polypeptide will exist like a pleated sheet, folded sheet. Okay, It looks like a pleated sheet. Let me just show you here. It looks like a pleated sheet. <coughs> Sort of thing. You can see this. It looks like a pleated sheet. It hydrogen bond uh, between uh, one amino acid and another amino acid within this polypeptide chain. Okay, they cannot form hydrogen bonds. Those hydrogen bonds, uh, as we can say, those hydrogen bonds cannot stabilize the coil structure. In those cases, the polypeptide chain will exist like a pleated sheet. Now, two pleated sheets. It's called beta pleated sheets. Between two pleated pleated sheets. Okay, there is an hydrogen bonding. There are hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds form between two pleated sheets. Okay, between two pleated sheets. So this is, students observe very carefully here. This is one polypeptide chain. This is another polypeptide chain. Okay, the polypeptide chain cannot form coil structure. In those cases, the polypeptide chain will exist like the pleated sheets. And two pleated sheets, are held together by means of hydrogen bonding, intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Okay, we call these arrangement as beta pleated sheets. Let me try to explain. What is meant by beta pleated sheets? So it is a secondary structure of the second type of secondary structure is the beta pleated sheet. In beta pleated sheet, the polypeptide backbone is extended in a zigzag structure resembling a series of pleats. Okay. 
right here. That is beta pleated In beta pleated chi, the polypeptide backbone in beta pleated sheets, okay, come on. The uh, polypeptide backbone, the polypeptide backbone, backbone means uh, the chain, okay. The polypeptide backbone is extended is extended in a zigzag in a zigzag structure in a zigzag structure assembling a series of pleats assembling a series a series of pleats P L E A T S pleats okay Students keep this in mind, very, very important. No, no. So, in secondary structure, what we are trying to say is the polypeptide chain may exist as alpha helix or may exist as beta pleated chains. Okay. Students, some in some case, isn't, suppose uh, this is uh, uh, one, one polypeptide chain, okay, it appears like this uh, pleated chain. Right, this is another polypeptide chain which appears like this. Right, between them there are hydrogen bonds. There are hydrogen bonds formed between them. Okay, like that. So this is one pleated sheet. This is another pleated sheet. Okay, between them there are hydrogen bonds. Okay, this is called beta pleated sheets. This may be. This is one polypeptide chain. This is another polypeptide chain. But there are. Uh, there are proteins in which a single polypeptide chain, right? A single polypeptide chain may exist like this. This is a sheet, a pleated sheet. This is another pleated sheet, and the two pleated sheets are connected through an amino acid. So it means they are not two polypeptide chains. They are single polypeptide chain. They are single polypeptide chain, but uh, has a, a structure like this. We call this. Uh, a turn as beta turn. That's a turning, right? This call this turn is called a beta turn. Anyway, beta turn is not given in our uh, book, so you need not worry about that. Okay, just uh, for additional information, I'm saying this. Okay, note. Yeah, student, is this clear? Any doubt in this? Any doubt? So this is regarding secondary structure of protein. Very simple. Secondary structure, right? Uh, protein in, in secondary structure, protein exists in two ways. Either alpha helical structure or uh, beta pleated sheets. Okay. Now, uh, Usually, uh, fibrous proteins, right, exist in alpha helical form. Let me write here the next question. Fibrous protein, let me write here. In general, fibrous proteins has alpha helical structures. Has alpha helical structures. Whereas globular proteins, in general, globular proteins, okay, they uh, usually exist, uh, uh, predominantly exist in beta pleated sheets. Beta pleated sheets. Okay, keep this in mind. This is a very, very important point. Right? Then. So this is regarding uh, secondary structure. So students keep this in mind. Secondary structure is stabilized by hydrogen bond. Okay, the polypeptide chains are joined together by means of uh, hydrogen bond, or the polypeptide chain is stabilized by means of hydrogen bond. Okay, how how 
the primary structure of, of, of the protein chain folds. That is what we call a secondary structure. Now, let me go to the next one for the tertiary structure. What is the tertiary structure of protein? Tertiary structure of protein. Very simple. Tertiary structure refers to further folding of the secondary structure. Okay. Further folding of secondary structure of protein. Secondary structure of protein. Simple. Okay, after getting the alpha helical structure or beta plated sheets, these proteins will, will, will undergo further folding. Further folding takes place due to some other interactions. What are they? Due to non-covalent interactions, let me write here. Okay, there are secondary uh, bonding interactions, right? Non-covalent interactions. Non-covalent interactions. Non-covalent interactions, okay, stabilizes, stabilizes the secondary structure uh, or the tertiary structure of protein. Non-covalent interactions. What are the non-covalent interactions we have? Right? Number one. There are uh, many non-covalent interactions. Number one, uh, electrostatic attraction. Electrostatic attraction. between uh, COO minus group and NH3 plus group. This is positive charge, this is negative charge. So between them there are some attraction. It is called electrostatic attraction. Number two, um, hydrogen bonding. Students, here hydrogen bonding okay, may exist between, uh, between one amino acid and another amino acid which is far away, which may be far away from, from, the, from this amino acid and uh, uh, make the, the structure coil, further folding. So further folding may happen, okay, through hydrogen bonding also, right? Then third one, hydrophobic interactions, hydrophobic, hydrophobic interaction, okay? Uh, we also have Van der Waals interactions, weak interactions, Van der Waals forces of attraction, Van der Waals force may operate. Okay, so these interactions makes the further folding of secondary structure. The secondary structure will undergo further folding due to these attractions. Okay, so you'll get a, uh, you'll get a, a more folded structure called the tertiary structure. Okay, tertiary structure of protein. So tertiary structure of protein will give you the three-dimensional structure. Tertiary structure of protein will give you the three-dimensional structure for, more, for a protein. And remember, three-dimensional structure is responsible for the function. Three-dimensional structure is responsible for the function. Okay. Then what about the quaternary structure? I will just give this information because it is not much uh, important. It is important, but then we will go for quaternary structure. Quaternary structure of protein. See, whenever protein contains more than one polypeptide chain, okay, if protein contain more than one polypeptide chain chain these polypeptide chains are called subunits i have already told you subunits see whenever protein contain more than one polypeptide chains then only we will go for quaternary structure Okay, in quaternary structure, how the individual subunits, individual polypeptide chain, how they fold, how they exist. 
okay that structure is means nothing but quaternary structure say for example in the case of hemoglobin in the case of hemoglobin right the single uh, heme unit has four four just i'll show like this has four polypeptide chains these polypeptide chains fold okay hemoglobin contain four polypeptide chains so hemoglobin is a tetramer students keep this in mind hemoglobin is a tetramer right it consists of four uh, polypeptide chains these four polypeptide chain they fold individually they form tertiary structure they form tertiary structure and all the tertiary structure held together will give you the final structure which is called the quaternary structure okay this quaternary structure will go to quaternary structure only if protein contain more than one polypeptide chain if protein contain single polypeptide chain then uh, will will stop up to the uh, tertiary structure that's all will never go for quaternary structure okay students is this clear any doubt right okay so um, we have uh, completed the 